Hello and welcome everyone to our next episode of Help and Trade podcast, where we give space to entrepreneurs and their startups. My today's guest is Leslie Calvo, and due to the coronavirus and the lockdown related to it, we decided to make things different, and so we created a workshop. And the topic of the workshop is five ways to improve your productivity working from home, which is something that everyone should be able to relate to as long as they are on a lockdown. Um, lastly, we'll present also slides. So dear listener, if you want uh, and you want to see the slides so that you have something tangible, you can visit our link on YouTube or you can just contact us and we can send you the presentation as well so that you have something tangible in front of you while listening to the audio as well. Um, and please, yes, in the meantime, uh, connect to us via social media, Facebook, Help and Trade One or Twitter, Help and Trade One, just as well as Instagram, Help and Trade. And we are also, as I said, on YouTube. And, uh, well, just drop us an email, essentially. Contact at helpandtrade.com. Uh, Leslie and me, your host, Stefan Kurutz, that is written Stefan, K-U-R-U-C. We both are on LinkedIn and you can also reach out to us. You can get the contact through our blog post, which link is also posted underneath your audio right now. So, uh, so much about the introduction. Thank you very much for joining us. And yes, I'm giving the word to Leslie, who will right away start with the presentation. Thank you and enjoy. So here we go. So we're going to start with the first subjects that I'm going to go through. So the tips that I'm going to give you today. So the first one is to clear up your workspace. The second is to create a morning routine. The third is to spend more time offline. The fourth is to meditate. And the fifth is choose where to focus your attention. And like I said before, this is nothing here is rocket science, but there's very interesting psychological studies done on all these parts to show actually how they increase your productivity and also increase your calm. So the first one we're gonna talk about is clearing up your workspace. And this goes far beyond just the aesthetics of making it look pretty. They've done so many studies that have actually shown that there's a real psychological power in clearing of your space. It actually reduces stress, it reduces anxiety and leads to more productivity. And it's interesting, we, um, after speaking to Stefan the other day, he's just cleared his workspace and has noticed a, do a definite difference straight away. And it's amazing that the impact that it has on you. And you can go as far as actually clearing the rest of your home, but today we're just talking about your workspace. So, um, and if you've never worked from home before, it's very important that you actually set up a designated area that will be your workspace. And you might have a whole room or you might just have, you know, a desk or you might even have part of the kitchen table. You know, this is a, a new situation for many people. But the importance of actually setting up a designated workspace is that it creates energy and momentum in that area. And it also helps when you step into that area, you go into work mode in your brain. So even if you've just got a small area, then just use the same place every single day. That will really help. Um, and make sure that your desk, if you already are working at home and you have your desk, make sure that you can clear it of anything unnecessary. So the only thing it needs on it is a computer, a notepad and a pen. It doesn't need five pens, doesn't need three notepads. It just needs the clearest surface that you can find. And what that will do is it will just, when you sit down, it will increase the calm and it will just reduce stress and it also increases your productivity, which it seems like such a simple thing, but it's actually really, really powerful. Um, any other things that you have that are to do with work, you can put them in a, a small organizer or a drawer, or you can even just have a box next to you, which has got any other bits and pieces that you need that you might need for work. So just really aiming for that completely clear surface to be working on. And then after you've done your physical workspace, the next thing to really do is to go into your virtual workspace. So that is clearing up your desktop, your emails, make sure everything is tidy and in folders and files. Because again, when you first go on your screen, if everything's all jumble and a mess, then it in immediately increases the stress that you're experiencing. So there are two different ways that you can actually clear up your workspace. So virtual and physical. And if there's any questions there, do you want to type them in chat? I don't know if you're going to do them now, Stefan, or you want to do them at the end. So far, there are no questions, therefore, just go ahead. Okay, perfect. Great, thank you. And the next thing I want to talk to you about is creating a morning routine. 
And this is a really important thing that I think a lot of people overlook, but it can, it makes such a difference because it sets up the tone for your entire day. And it also has a, like a ripple effect for the rest of the day. It can start your day, then you feel calm, controlled and powerful. And often we think that a, um, a morning routine has to be a hugely elaborate thing, but all it is, is just using the time between waking up and transitioning to work or the next part of your day and using that in a conscious way where you're actually setting intention for what you're going to do for that day. And the most important thing with this is it needs to be very simple and very easy to follow because you don't want to have something too complicated because it's going to, what you're going to be doing by doing it every day, you actually start to set up a pattern in the same way as, you know, we all wake up and brush our teeth in the morning. It's in, we don't even think about it now. And this also happens when you do a morning routine every single day, it becomes like ingrained into your mind and also ingrained into your habits. So it becomes a very easy thing to do. So that is um, very important to keep it easy and simple. Um, the things that it can include the meditation, breath work, stretching and exercise, gratitude practice, journaling or reviewing your goals. Um, and it, it can be really, really simple. It can be something as simple as just doing like, writing down three things that you're grateful for, um, doing a, you know five minutes of exercise or stretching and you know a bit of breath work. And that is a morning routine. Um, so you can, or you can have it longer. You know, mine has de developed from, I did start with three minutes of meditation. And now I'm, now I'm doing, um, I do yoga, I do meditation, I go through my gratitudes and then I review my goals. And that is actually something particularly for your productivity is very, very good is to actually review your goals in the morning um, before you start the day. And you can also go through your day. If you've got meetings or you have a, quite a full agenda, you can literally go through and visualize um, every part of your day. Even if it just takes five minutes to do this, see yourself operating at peak performance, see yourself, you know, how you would, how you would be showing up as your best self, just imagine what you would look like, what you sound like, that in itself is a morning routine. So it doesn't need to be really elaborate, it doesn't need to um, take a long time, it's just something that you do to start your day with intention. So you're starting your day through action rather than reaction. There's so many people who just, you know, straight away jump on their phone, check emails, and then they're immediately reacting to the world. Whereas this, even if you take five minutes, you start from a place of intention and place of reaction. And if you've got kids at home, so you, and they're sort of straight away with you, you can also just set up when they're having breakfast, you can just have that maybe take five minutes there just to do either, you know, stretching or breathing or breath work, meditate, whatever you want to do. But just so you set your day up with intention will make a big difference for the tone that you set and also the energy that you give yourself for the rest of the day. So that's the second tip. And if there's any questions or should I just carry on? Uh, there is actually one specific question, which is, uh, can you elaborate on journaling? Oh, yes. Yeah. Journaling is, is um, journaling can be uh, many things. It can be free writing. So one of the things or, um, you can do is just sit in the morning and there's um, something called free writing, whereas you just literally let the pen go. So you just start writing and you maybe give yourself two minutes and you just it's like brain dumping in a way. So you just let the pen go. Another thing you can do is use a journal prompt. So you can ask yourself is, um, okay, what do you want to have achieved? What goals do you want to have had by in a year's time? How will you feel? What will you sound like? Um, what will you look like? That could, that could be a journal prompt or you can, um, yeah, journaling, it can also be writing down your dreams, your hopes, um, it can be so many things. Um, so yeah, just sitting down and writing again, writing gratitudes. That's also could be classed as journaling. Um, so I hope that's answered the question. That. Perfectly. Thank you. Great. Perfect. So I'm going to go on now to the um, third tip, um, which is spend more time offline. And this is very interesting at the moment because particularly because there's so many people inside and um, they did studies and the average adult uses uh, is on their phone about four hours a day. And this was pre Corona. So um, now I know that there's a lot of people on their phone a lot more than they used to be. And, you know, there, there are psychological impacts of being on the screen for too long during the day. Um, especially now we've got a uh, casino style um, scroll and box sets where it's just easy to spend hours on your phone without realizing. You know, it's the intention. They actually want people to stay on their phone and to keep being on there. So it's really easy to just, you know, lose time, you know, scrolling or watching things. Um, 
And there's, an, it was an interesting study, actually 75% of American adults had, could reach their phone for 24 hours a day without moving their feet. So they just had it in their surroundings. And I know my husband does this all the time. He's, he's got it near him, you know, all the time. And um, that's something there's, there, when I was looking at this, because I did quite a lot of research into, um, you know, the amount of time and the effects that it has on people. And there's a little thing called propinquity, which is very interesting that the things that are closest to us in our physical world have a big impact on our um, psychological experience of the world. So even if you're not on your phone and it's just in your surroundings, it actually already has an imp imp impact on your psychological experience. So that was something that I found very interesting. Um, and there's some tips that you can use now to if you would like to spend a little bit time less time or you feel that it would be useful for you to spend less time online um, one of the things that you can do is by using that um, we are behavioral architects so we can create the world around us and by just making something a little bit less accessible then it makes it that so that it's not as likely it doesn't have that level of impact that we talked about before so you can um, move your phone just move, choose to move your phone away from you for um, certain periods of the day so it might you might choose to do it like maybe in the morning for the first half hour or half an hour before you go to sleep or you, when you're eating or say between five and seven you just choose to literally put your phone or the screen away from you so you just make it less accessible from, for you. Um, another thing to do rather than just thinking right I need to be off my, off, off my phone I don't need to spend so much time on my phone actually think what you want to do with the time the extra time that you're going to have by not being on your phone so that could be going into nature doing some exercise mindfulness taking some hobbies reading um, so actually prepare what you're going to do when you're not on the phone so you're so you're giving yourself an option actually of what you're doing with the time rather than just having a void because then it's so easy just to go back to the phone um, and the third thing that you can do is start actually by adding in your own stopping cues um, and a stopping cue is something that is basically we would have had them before when we were reading books and newspapers and things by you know at the end of a chapter that's a stopping cue or at the end of a newspaper end of an article that's a stopping cue or when we would have watched a program and it turns up starts a new one and the next one doesn't start until the week later that's a stopping cue it gives your brain the cue that it's time to stop and now like I said before with um, the end of scroll and box sets we don't have that anymore so you can choose to yourself right I want to have an hour or I want half an hour and then after that I want to stop and what you do is you actually set an alarm and make it so that you actually have to get up to turn it off so not an alarm on your phone so you actually have to get up and then do and break the moment that you're in and that will also help um, to be not online so much and especially when you're working from home it's so easy to you know just get caught up on oh I'll just check something on my phone or I'll just do something on my phone and then the next thing is half an hour later so just being really aware and conscious of the time that you are using um, online um, yeah that's the third tip there it's gonna go is there any questions should I get move forward so far no more questions you can continue right, I'll go forward brilliant so the fourth um, tip I'm gonna give you today is meditation to meditate um, it's the fastest and easiest way to get calm and clear in your mind and it also enables you to operate at a peak performance and it was always seen before as something that was a little bit hippie a little bit woo woo but now there's been so many um, scientific studies that actually show that it can do so many things um, to increase your calm your clarity your focus it can um, reduce your blood pressure it boosts your immune system it helps improve sleep they can do so many things for you as well as giving you a calm and clear mind um, and at the moment what we want to do is have our best performing brain um, so this is a way that you can really get calm and clear in your mind very productive and it also teaches you that your thoughts, they're just thoughts, they're not part of your actual being. Um, and especially at the moment where there's so much kind of fear and negativity around, and there's so many th thoughts flying around, it's very useful to actually start to learn a practice where you can actually control your thoughts and control your mind. Um, if you're first starting out with um, meditation, it could be really useful to start with just doing a guided meditation. Um, there are many apps that you can use for that. There's um, um, Calm is one app that you can use. I know Deepak Chopra has a lot of great guided meditations that you can also use. 
So if you've never actually done that, um, done meditation or tried meditation, this could be a good way to start doing it. And also because at the moment we have got more time at home, it is a great time to actually start doing this and putting it into a daily practice. Even if you just do three minutes a day, um, it will make a difference and then you can build it up from there. Um, yeah, and it teaches you really to control the, your mind and control your thoughts. And once you can do that, you can control your inner world. Um, and it's really interesting because sometimes it's not even just what's happening in your surroundings. It's actually the lens that you're looking at those surroundings through. And this will help just to give you a little bit of distance and to be able to see it in a, in a new way when you're actually learning to control your mind and control your thoughts. So that's um, learning how to meditate. And the last one I'm going to talk to you about is actually choosing where you focus your mind. And as I, um, we talked about, I just said about, um, you know, at the moment there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of negative news that's happening. And there was a study done that they showed that if they, you watch three minutes of negative news in the morning, you're 27% more likely to have a negative day. And I found that incredible, because especially at the moment, there's so much news and people watching so much news. Um, so it's just to be aware of where you're putting your focus. And obviously it's important to be aware of what's going on and to know, you know, keep yourself updated. But it's just when you choose to do that. Maybe you choose to do that not as the first thing that you do in, in the day. Um, and the interesting thing about your brain is that it actually focuses on, focuses on and enhances what you practice. So if you are tending to think more of the negative things or you've got more of a negative focus, your brain will actually start to scan your environment uh, for more negative things because it actually creates a pattern. Whether that pattern is good for you or not, it doesn't really realize. What it does is it just wants to do the same thing. So if you are more uh, focusing on more um, positive things, what it starts to do is it actually starts to see more positive things in your surrounding. And it actually starts to delete the negative ones in the same way on the other foot. So if you're really focusing on um, negative um, influences or negative thoughts, what your brain will actually start doing, which I found this fascinating, is it will actually start to look for the negative and actually start deleting out the positive things that it can see in your environment. And it just wants to run the pattern, whether that pattern is good for you or not. So, and right at the moment, it's really important to um, build your um, emotional immune system. So really focus on what you're grateful for and what has meaning in your life. Because when you actually, the human brain works at a much better level when it's um, working from a positive standpoint rather than a negative, a neutral or a stressed one. It's just incredible how much better you can um, perform, you can make decisions. Um, they've done so many studies and it's really amazing how, the difference that it makes when you're actually performing from a more positive um, brain. And... The interesting thing is that it not only affects us, it also affects everyone around us. So people you're working with, people you have connections with. Um, and they've done this very interesting study they did with, is to do with um, mirroring signals that your brain gets. And they looked at, um, they put a researcher, a happiness researcher into a plane in, in an airport. There was a queue waiting to get on a plane. And he started like looking at his watch and, you know, being a bit stressed and twitching. And within two minutes, the rest of the people in the queue had also started getting agitated. So you can very quickly see how your, your, um, your behavior influences those around you. And this is, it's, it's very clever. So what the effects that you're having and the more positive you think and the more positivity you give yourself, you also affect not only you, but it can be people who are twice or third times removed from you by that ripple effect. Um, and if we think of happiness rather than kind of like um, pleasure and woo, it's, it's amazing. If we actually think about it, happiness as being the joy that you feel when you're moving towards your own inner goals. That is a very interesting way to look at it. Um, and when they were doing these studies, it was brilliant to see that, um, that your joy and happiness gives your brain the highest level of problem solving abilities and also memory capacity. And also, this is very interesting, they did a study with children um, and they, they primed them beforehand to be positive. And the children that they primed to be positive rather than the other group, they set up um, some blocks for them to do and they, they did it 60% faster than the other children. And they kind of didn't really know what to do with this information because it's like it shouldn't really affect the spatial um, abilities, but it did just from being happier, your brain works at so much higher level. 
and they, your productivity and your productive energy actually increases by 30% when your brain is in a positive state compared with if it's in a neutral, negative or stressed. So you really are using your better brain when you're in a more positive state. And at the moment, um, yeah, just thinking of, of ways, I was looking at ways and exercises that you could do that were very easy. And I found some that were took two minutes a day. And if you did them for the next 21 days, it would increase your levels of happiness even if you did one of these. Um, and when they were doing the test, they saw that it actually could change your genetic preposition to whether you were um, pessimistic or optimistic by just doing one of these tests. Even someone who was 84 years old had been a lifetime pessimist. He did one of these for 21 days and then he became a low level optimist. So it can very quickly, very easily change your, your happiness. So, and, and it affects not only you, but also your productivity and every kind of educational and business um, um, outcome that they can actually test, it increased. So it's, it's really, I can't stress how important this is for you, you, your productivity, and also everyone around you. So these are the exercises. Um, so the first one is to write or say three new things that you're grateful for and why you're grateful for them over the last 24 hours. And, I've been doing gratitudes for years and years, and I didn't realize that you needed to do new things that you're grateful for. Because what happens is very quickly people say, you know, I'm grateful for my house, my husband, you know, the nature. And when you say the same thing, nothing changes, the needle doesn't move. But when they did a study and they actually, people did three new things every day, what they were grateful for and why, you don't need to write why, you just need to think of why, that's when the needle changed, that's when the needle moved. So it's, it's you know, such a simple thing that you can do that will really, really benefit your life. Um, the next thing you can do is you write one positive experience that you've had for the last 24 hours, from the last 24 hours, and then you bullet point three details about that. So. They can be big or large, doesn't matter. So what you were wearing, um, who you're speaking to, or you know, the color of the carpet or you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Because what you're doing there is you're teaching your brain to scan for the positive. And remember, we, we were talking earlier about your brain starts to recreate a pattern. So what you're doing is you're teaching your brain to scan for the positive. And then when you write the bullet, bullet points, it scans for the positive again. So you're doubling the impact of that one experience. And then and all of these things, once your brain starts scanning for the positive, it then begins, begins to start deleting the negative in your situation, whatever that is. So this is, these are really, really powerful. Um, and the third one, which is I particularly love for the moment, it is send a positive email or a text to a new person each day. And you do this and you, you, so you send an email or a text and you just tell them, you know, what they've, what they've meant for you in their life, how they've inspired you, what, what strengths you've found in them. And this will not only increase your happiness, it also spreads that happiness. And at the moment with our physical distancing that we've got, um, I thought this was such a beautiful way to increase your own happiness and also increase people's happiness around you. And the studies that they did about working out your happiness score, the one happiness score that was, could, was really stable that they could really rely on was your social connections. Um, your experience from social connections and as at the moment you know we have got this physical distancing, distancing these social social connections are more important than ever so yeah they're the three different um, exercises that you can do and you know if you do all three of them brilliant if you do one of them amazing um, and just do them for two minutes a day and what you do is you need to do them for 21 days and then you will see a dramatic difference in your level of happiness especially if you do all three um so that is the the five tips i'm just going to go over them for you now so first one is clear up your physical space again this will increase your calm and it also increase, increase your productivity the second one is creating a morning routine that will set you up for in in your day again you can be far more productive and also it will set you up from a place of power and a place from intention rather than a place of um, reaction. The third one is to limit screen time. Um, I think for, yeah, it, it makes a difference also for your productivity, especially um, if you're going to be working at home, just to be aware, you know, of just keeping your screen time to a, a minimum while you're working and also just for your own mental status for the rest of the time. Um, the fourth one is meditation. 
which um, you know is the fastest way of reaching um, calm and clarity and focus and really putting yourself in that peak performance state. And the fifth one is choose where you focus your mind. And there was those exercises to help you to really increase, you know, we want to give ourselves the best brain possible, especially in times of crisis, you want to be able to make the best decisions, um, you know, be um, at your clearest and be really act acting at your best. So they are really useful for all of those things. So that is, they are my five, five tips for increasing, incre increasing your productivity and also, um, gaining more calm and more balance in your life. And if there's any questions, I'm open for questions now. And I actually wanted to say, I'm gonna end the, after the questions, I'm gonna end this workshop with a five minute, um, just breathing and visualization exercise, just so that you leave feeling really calm and um, having a beautiful night after this. So if there's any questions, if you just type them in chat for Stefan, that would be great. Leslie, so far, there are no questions coming in. Uh, I thank you very much for your presentation. I will stop recording now and yeah. then we'll go with the breathing exercise and then we can also share among each other. Um, there was also a question from Abhishek coming now, actually. I, if you're going to share the, screen, uh, the, the slides with the audience, Yes, yes, I definitely can. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, I wanted to say as well, if um, everyone who's here, if you want to do like any particular um, focus or like work on your particular situation, then I was going to offer everyone here like a half an hour focus and calm session. So if there's anyone you would like to email me, um, Leslie at LeslieCalvo.com, and then we can go through if you've, your own situation to help you really get clear um, with anything that could be getting in your way or holding you back or not um, allowing you to work at your peak performance at the moment, then I'm happy to offer it to everyone here. Perfect. Thank you very much. I will stop recording now and we can move forward to your breathing exercise. And that was our online workshop, which was recorded via Zoom together with Leslie Calvo. Leslie, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and experience is my personal thank you to you and dear listener as we said at the beginning of the recording if you want to have the slides you want to see it tangible in front of you reach out to us via social media or find us via youtube where you can see the slides directly in front of you as well please let us know how did you like it what were your biggest takes from this workshop and if you want to have your own workshop organized with help and trade and you would like us to present it get exposure please let us know also reach out to us via social media just to let us know how do you like the podcast or if there's anything to be to be improved any ideas guests etc is always welcome thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed today's session and please keep in mind that because it was video conferencing the quality of the audio is not the best but hey this is a corona crisis we're doing our best so thank you again and have a great day bye bye